recording yo 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 okay i just went through like a little bit of the three month gainer and the one month gainer but right now at this point in time there are movers that are so good uh percentage wise that it's uh it's kind of not worth looking at all the other stuff because they move too slow and it's weird to say that a 10-15% ADR is slow but there are things uh, that are moving even faster and there's been so much opportunity only that I I've been fucking it up of course and like I said last week when I was happy and overconfident am I gonna cry next week and yeah <laughs> I cried but uh, let's go <clears throat> so let's just go through all of these names that I have um, I haven't really looked through through these in a week. I've been just focusing on the daily movers like uh, uh, TTOO, Axla, um, GNS is setting up. Mm, yeah, so let's just go through these from the top, see what we have. Super nice clean move. Uh, it undercuts a bit here on the weekly, which was a bit weird. And um, But the real entry here was this day. I think I've been talking about this. Uh, this day here, so I'm just keeping this to to look at it. But then again, it's 9 ADR. Um, it's too too slow for me to trade with my account. I need the the intraday to two three day explosive movers to really grow my account. Okay. Yes, this one also talked about before the entry on this day right here. Tops has not really been acting the way I wanted it to but it's nice if it comes back on the weekly closes above the 10 week then that's good so next week so one or two weeks this could have potential to move <clears throat> Nothing. So liquid. <clears throat> now this one wants to go lower, I think. Yeah, to the fifteen area. I would guess. I think that this is one of these setups that need, uh, <clears throat> you know, we made an explosive move and then a, a small high. I think this one is gonna create a bigger weekly range here, and in a few months, this could be, you know, something to based on the bigger picture up to the 30 area, maybe. <clears throat> So this is something I've been watching a lot lately, not this specific stock, but this specific pattern, which is an explosive move, creates one major low, another major low, and then a third major low, um, but I would have liked this one to undercut this right here and then reclaim, so now this one is a bit, uh, well, we'll see if it... Uh, It's actually really interesting to look at this. Mm, close really weak on the week. There's nothing right now. I'm just saying that it has some structure, not really the flag structure I'm looking for, but more of a, a bounce play. So we'll see if it uh, sets up. Yeah, I already have the alarm here waiting for this to maybe break down. That would be nice. <clears throat> Carlytics, man, I have a buy order here, I had a buy order here, which uh, filled me and then I sold uh, the next day, I think, which is nice, you know, a little trade, um, wasn't really trusting the, the big setups yet, nothing here, this is actually really dangerous, a, a tiny... Oh, this this topping tail here so if anything you know this one needs just time 
this needs time to create a weekly higher low maybe and then a tight range in a few weeks or months maybe um, pff, wow this volume this one is also too slow for me so this one I should not really be looking at I think I said that before but I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, if you can hit one of these days with, let's say, a 2-3% risk, you know. So, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. If it comes back over this area, I'm interested. See what happens. <coughs> Still needs time, but it's starting to look interesting. This wick here is beautiful. So I'm guessing. Actually, I want to know earlier. I want to know even this range pretty much <clears throat> maybe setting up for something big again in a few weeks maybe maybe mm. hmm that's actually interesting soundhound AI creating a so far higher low compared to AI which is creating lower lows hmm that's actually interesting <clears throat> See if it triggers this uh, bottoming tail. I don't really like how it's moving all of these AI stocks are like a bit choppy all the other big runners the past two weeks have been super super nice movements like uh, they're like screaming at you to buy here you're like hmm is this a flag on the one hour chart yeah sure but the bigger picture is like nah it's a bit too early and it's the resistance it's too much noise you know so it's not there yet. I think it's gonna be the AI sector is gonna have another nice run. But right now I'm just like, ugh, it's just it's unclear. And I'm looking for those two to three day massive runners, hundreds of percent, with like a two to five to ten percent risk. So now I'm just again just going through to see what is the overall market doing of my. Uh, my stocks that I haven't watched it. What are they? What are they doing? Which ones are holding up? Which ones are creating higher lows? Which ones are dumping? You know all that stuff. He's observing and watching. Uh, oh wait. Yeah, another week. Could be nice. Could be nice. Super nice price structure. Next target up to the six dollar area. So, this is definitely something to keep an eye on.
Hmm. Yeah, these setups are really not really unclear. If you just look at them on the daily, they can be a bit unclear. But if you look at them with the weekly, you can see that it's basically a pullback. It will hit the 200 week, a pullback to the 10 week with bottoming tail, green volume, green bars. Uh, next week trigger and then within this uh, trigger you have this beautiful range and a super tight little wedge here on the right, right shoulder after the right shoulder and then it triggered so it's basically on yeah on this day right in here <clears throat> starting to look like a huge um, higher low with this well on the daily chart a head and shoulders not yet and again it's just uh, all over the place uh, low ADR so I don't know nothing for me this one is triggered the alarm what is it doing uh. <clears throat> this is really interesting um, usually like Nvidia is, is a, a leader and ever since here it never closed under the 10 week you can see it on this like uh, leaning head and shoulders here and then they trigger the, the line here but <clears throat> also the entries on this one was super hard but anyhow after this point, it never closed under the 10 week until here. And then it came back and created a topping tail, a small new high, which they usually do. This is a sign that the trend is, is uh, getting to an end. And sometimes they, or many times, they make a new high it's like this topping pattern, but it doesn't have to be the end. This could just mean that it needs a a bigger period to, to consolidate. You know, like here. Here you can see that it goes above the 10 week. It closed under, and then it created a... Well, not all here. Over here it created a new high, and then it shook out. So, oh my god, look at this. It's super hard to to see this or to get in but again again this is not nothing I'm trading it's just fun to look at the price action you know once they close under they on these big stocks or at least on this one it usually makes a new high and then it chops and then finally it shakes out and then it goes higher <clears throat> <clears throat> Hmm. Yeah, this one. Hmm. Kind of looking at this little range. This is again not something I'm gonna buy. Um, too too slow for me. But if I had more money, this could be an option. And I'm looking at this wedge here that happened above the ten week. Uh, lots of resistance here to the left, so <clears throat> it made a nice move, then just went sideways for one, two, three months maybe. And if I were to buy this one for a potential higher move, this area on the 50 day ooh, yeah, 50 day bounce is is an area. And now it has a super clean line of resistance here. So what I've seen is that if this one comes back, you can buy the like the 15 minute or the one hour candle breakout on this above this area and risk the lows of that candle. And it can have a explosive move back into this range if it wants to continue higher, but then it hasn't triggered yet. And again, I'm not going to play it, so it doesn't really matter. Ooh. Again, we're seeing lots of this. See this little weekly shakeout, but then it came back still within this uh, this range and now it's hitting that 
that area of resistance I was talking about on the other stock. Mm, but again, slow. I'm gonna get to the good stuff soon. Too soon. Big, big, big pattern. <clears throat> Ooh, beautiful. Needs another week. One more week. Let this tighten up. And then it has potential to go at least to over the three area. If it wants to roll over, that is. But right now it looks looks really nice. So far. Do I have an alarm? 15 ADR. No alarm, okay. Maybe I should add something. Same here. Again, too slow for me, but kind of the same idea, but this one was much weaker on the weekly basis. But you can see here, it's the same thing. You know, it creates this big range, comes down to the 50, 50 day, creates this uh, almost like head and shoulders, which is, it's not really, if this one comes up and crosses this line, then it's a sort of a confirmed head and shoulders. But it's the same thing, comes down, creates this line of resistance, and if you wanted to play this, then it would be a nice entry on the breakout of uh, over 480. 480. But then again, look at where this is. And I have my warnings written right there. Um, nothing. Mm, needs more time. THTX. Nice, explosive, clean move. Super nice mover. Nothing yet. You can always you can almost see the same head and shoulders here, so but it closed the week really weak. So if you were to play this one, you should not expect it to expect it expect it oh my god, expect it to reach this high. It should probably make a lower high if this one is gonna set up for a bigger move in uh, in maybe a week. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it really came back. <clears throat> oh yeah, so here we have a nice potential mover. This is what you want to look for in your small account. These insane runners, you know, to 300%, 300%, and it's holding up above the 10 week, I mean 10 day, <clears throat> and within here, right now it's too soon, it needs at least, it's gonna trigger, it's Monday today, one day, two days, on Wednesday, this is gonna be maybe looking really beautiful, maybe. <clears throat> gonna move this down a bit. Also, mark it. Teal. Top aware. Broke down. Closed. Weak. Huh. That's really not what you want to see. <laughs> Um, so I'm not gonna look at this unless, you know, this week it comes back close to strong above, you know, 230 area, then it might be a potential bounce for next week up to the $4 area, but right now there's nothing. Hmm. A little bit unclear so far, but this could be something. But it, you know, it made a weak bottom, this doji candle, and a really unclear range. So these ones are hard. Um, this line is based on the log chart, I think, yeah. Really hard.
Hmm. No. <clears throat> wow, this one is getting tight. Super tight. Just... Just wicking under the $20 area. Um, the overall move is a... 0 0.5, 0 0.6 pullback. It hasn't made a trigger on the daily yet. It made one trigger here, one trigger here, and let's see here. The day, week. Hmm. I guess. Yeah, it is valid. But the range is so unclear. <clears throat> Super unclear. Mm. And again, I told myself that when, when it's not super clear, then you should probably just watch. Or if you're going to attack it, get a, a wide stop loss. Let's say you buy the breakout of this area, then risk the lows, you know? So I'm just going to set an alarm here. Don't really need this one. <clears throat> This one could move. We'll see. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. What is this? What is it gonna do? It closed the week over 10 day. So, this could actually be really nice. Oh, it's an OTC. Never mind. <laughs> I can't even trade it. God damn it. Interesting to see what it does, though. This little range right here. <clears throat> wow. One of the weaker AI stocks, but also because it made the biggest move. 1500% move in a few days. That's absolutely insane. Now it has broken down here and is ready for a bounce. Mm. A daily trigger would be over here. <clears throat> it did trigger pre market. Question is, hmm. no question. <clears throat> it also I have to decide like if I'm gonna buy six AI. If I'm gonna buy this in this area, because since it's really unclear so far, I would have to risk the lows, the very lows. So the risk is quite wide, and this could also stay here for a bit more, even though I get some kind of trigger here, depending on this little wedge and where it is, big picture, it could still take a few days. And during those days, I could miss, you know, some even better opportunities. So you really have to decide what you want to do and of course the best thing is to take the biggest movers which you don't really know until um, hindsight hmm. Oh yeah, right. I think I missed my order on this bounce. But it was also one of those really unclear charts. 
it was the first green day, pretty much. Uh, with the... Yeah, it went straight up. Went straight up. First green day. See this? But the question is if you would be able to get your order in if they open. Can you take a look at it? It's interesting. Yeah, here. Hmm. Not really what I'm looking for. Ooh, nice move. So this is something for the future. Wanting, wanting it to set up here for a week, maybe. Oh, okay. This is uh, almost like CXAI. Where is it here? The same type of play. You know, you have this bigger picture um, waterfall to the downside. And then it, oh, it actually triggered here, this range right here. But I thought it was too soon. I think that this trigger here was to play this, this run. But I think the bigger picture is asking for a, a double, not a V-shape, but a double bottom or a, a higher low at least. Would be my guess. So I'm not going to touch it unless uh, it gives me that. Just as, same here. But this one is resting down here, so this one can actually, once it goes, it could go quite fast. At least up to 70% move, so I definitely keep an eye on this. Uh, maybe for a, a red to green move. Hmm. Beautiful here. Beautiful. Why was it beautiful? It was beautiful because it was all the way down here. That's a, I think it's you call a mean reversion trade. It's down 70%, or actually no, it's a, it's going down quite, you know, orderly, but it's so extended to the downside. So it's, it's due for a bounce, even though it's going lower. And why it's so beautiful is that it created this range. And then you can connect these lines here, here. Then you have this little super tiny shakeout recover, uh, taking out this uh, range right there. So if you were, if you were awake in the morning, take this. See how quick it was. No, it was quite nice. Even the volume was good. So I guess you would have to. Yeah, here. Let's see, you got in here. If you risk the lows, maybe. 6%, 30. <clears throat> hmm. It's a little bit weaker than I would have wanted it to be. But also look at where it is. Wow. Look at this one. This is a parabolic, but to the... To the downside. Had his first wick rebound. It might be too soon to go long. I don't really like the the price action of it. It's it's like wicking, but it is setting up. It is setting up. And the thing with this one is that even to cuz I don't think this one is going to make a new high. Or I don't know, but 
He's looking at how sort of weak it is, but still setting up something. Uh, I have my alarms, so I'm I'm looking at this one once it triggers, how it looks like. We'll see. Oh, when does when did this one go? It's too. Oh wow! Oh, it's in here. Okay. Oh, wait. One more day down here, or another day in this area. It's beautiful. Where could it go? Hit resistance there. Bounced off the 10, 10 day and bounced off the 200 day. Next target. Hmm. Well, I guess the next target is here. 150. 40% move. Yeah, it's looking nice. It feels a bit too soon. I think that this one, if you look at it on a like four hour chart, maybe. Yeah, here we go. Or a six hour chart. Yeah. Would be nice with after the open one more little high here under under the this area to create this range and the breakout of that again it feels too soon on the daily so it could just also wick down but I don't know looks good but I don't know that's the tough ones yeah looks good but I don't know This one is definitely a close watch. Uh, let's see here. ACB. <laughs> Ebet. Nah, what the fuck is this? Nothing really. BFS. Yeah. I bought this one. Oh, okay, I bought it prematurely. Or actually, no, I bought it based on this range break. But I think I should have been more patient. But this one... Mm, I don't like that it's pumping and falling. This one should should reverse here, if anything. Uh, but it's looking ready. It is looking ready for something. At least up to the... You know, it could even go to a 30 area, actually. Yeah, to 30 would be a nice target. <clears throat> Gonna change this range right here. Hopefully we can get something here. Something like that. But I'm happy though that I took this and I stopped out. This is what I gotta focus more on because Actually, I'll, I'll talk about it later. But now this one is looking, looking quite nice. Envos. Oof. It's a bit, you know, all over the place. It was a ten million dollar market cap down here. I, I think that actually, the last couple of weeks. People with a lot of money have just scout, uh, scouted all these uh, 10 million, around 10 million, million dollar market caps and just pumped them because that's what, what's been going the last couple of weeks. All oh, their super small caps. <laughs> I hear you, TX. I remember the other day uh, when uh, I fucked up on Axla, I was talking to my, uh, I made a video for myself when. He's talking to myself, I'm not gonna release that one, but I was looking at this one and I was like telling myself, oh, you don't have to buy it here, you have to wait for the for the setup, but then you buy it, but this one actually never kinda, well, it did actually set up. Oh no, that was market close, and here one, and here, maybe, I don't know. It was super sketchy, it was like moving during the nights, but I was talking to myself, oh, this is a fake town, but this one could, you know, it could, it might as well be a, 
a bear flag that it's in a super weak stock that's going lower on this day while it was open and well I guess it was the right thinking but in hindsight right now it's not really my setup but that would be nice to to buy there but it could just as well have went lower uh, let's see here. Genus. Mm. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I've been seeing today? I've seen these uh, recent runners uh, made this range here on the one hour chart and then it kind of wicked under and then it came back so this one could easily go to you know the 166 area so about a 50% move maybe look at TTOO you see it? man it's so beautiful look at this wicked under created a bit of a range and then it popped mm, nice 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 CGC beautiful Gonna change this one to here, right there. Okay, so okay, so I'm gonna make a promise or a test to myself to see if I can all the trades I'm gonna take this week Monday through Friday can I always have a hard stop loss in place because 90% of the time I have but then those 10% I you know I don't have a stop loss and I don't dare to add one or I have one but then I remove it and I've been I've been seeing all the opportunities, I've taken some, even though I messed them up, I've made money, but then I've lost all that and some money on just being a bitch, being scared, not being able to take my stop loss, and uh, you know, obviously that's the only thing that's standing between me being red versus green, because the market is here, there's been so much opportunity. And I'm still not uh, green, so it's all my fault. What can I do? I can only stop being such a little mm -hmm, and uh, actually do something about it. So if I don't dare to set a stop loss, then I should not take the trade because what I'm seeing is not really valid. And that's the problem because I've noticed that now that we have this really nice market, there are some places that set up similarly. They are not as beautiful, but they are like they have a similar structure. And I'm like, I get so much FOMO because I'm like, I don't see the entry. I don't see the entry. I think it's gonna pop, but I don't see the entry. And that's when I, you know, maybe add too soon with too much size. And then I don't dare to set a stop loss because I did not really take a trigger. Well, it was some sort of trigger, but it's so unclear that I don't dare to set my stop loss. So I think that one thing to do is to, if, if I think something has potential, well, get the wide stop. And then if it just goes, be happy with that. Make your 3 to 5 R, you know, uh, or add back if it gives you some structure. But don't add full size with a tiny stop loss when you don't, when there's nothing that you, you know, believe or trust. Because those are the ones that I've been losing money from. When I think I see something, but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. So I take a super tight stop loss and then I don't dare to, to stop out. Especially if it goes against me quite quick and then I see that oh fuck my Stop loss was supposed to be one R and now it's down four R. So I don't want to stop out here I'll wait for a bounce and then add the stop loss, but then it just keeps falling so 
if the structure is not there, why even take it in the first place? Sometimes it works. You buy like pre-structure and then someone pumps it overnight and then you have like a 60% gap up and you're in it. But you can't really rely on those because there are so many things setting up like uh, ACB and there's uh, CGC setting up in one or two days. Man, I love this fall right here. Create a bottom and on Wednesday, bam. Bam, bam, bam. <clears throat> so I need to have always have a stop loss in place 100% of the time. And also, this one is really hard. I have to keep looking big picture wise. And I've talked a little bit about Axla, but I fucked up this one so bad. Really bad. How this one could have been a 30, or no, I'm not talking Swedish now, uh, three to four thousand dollar trade, which is more than a double in my account. But I, I wanted to get in and out of the trade, and I fucked it up quite early by not selling the top, which can't really expect that of yourself because you're gonna fuck it up but I didn't sell the top and I wanted to get back in because of the big picture but I was looking at uh, too small of a time frame so I was getting in based on like the two minute chart with a, a too tight of a risk so I'm, I'm taking paper cut over paper cut and then you know maybe I get in I, I'm, I took so many nice entries but I also took some bad entries and then overall the whole trade got me tilted in my mind and in the end I gave back all the gains and then some a lot then some when I could have just pressed the trade entry once and exit once and made three to four thousand dollars top that with all the transaction costs which are hundreds and hundreds of dollars from getting in and out so if the base structure is on a daily time frame you know at least expect don't do anything for the first at least two days you know two days then you can maybe look at it again same with cgc or was it cgc no which one was it GNS, yeah. Same here. End today, one, two days. Axla, one, two days. This was actually three days because I took this one on the entry day here. Of course, then again, it's a range that matters a lot as well. But I, I gotta stop getting in and out of big picture trades and let them ride and take my stop loss. If I do this, you know, I'll be profitable in no time. I'll be profitable tomorrow, next week. So that's also one thing I'm gonna start adding into this. Am I profitable from next from last week, this Monday? No, I'm not profitable. I would have been if I took my stop losses. I would have been profitable. So until next week when I make this next video when I go through all of these stocks and I'm gonna look at did I take all my stop losses at the right area I'm talking like at 1R did I take them or did I let something slide and depending on which I did did I let it slide or did I take my stop loss then after I've come to conclusion of what I did am I profitable so this week, I'm going to have a hard stop in place at all times. And I think to make it a little bit easier on me, I might take profits depending on the chart and then raise my stop loss to avoid the damage of the, of the downside is to slowly grind higher. We will see. So 
has a lot. Oh, well, let's see. Talk about this one right now. I'm I'm in two positions right now. This one, uh, by OC. This is pretty much the same setup as. Um, not really the same setup, but uh, let's see. ACB. You can sort of see the same structure, but this one is different. CGC. This one, yeah, this one is also kind of similar, but it's uh, different. So why bio C? It is a bit fast. If you look at the daily, you can see that it's hovering above the uh, 10 day. But on the intraday, it is looking really nice. Especially since yesterday or Friday closed at the highs. I took this entry here on this breakout. Here. And I added, uh, after this candle triggered, I had a uh, buy order at uh, 57 based on that it's too soon and it's probably going to fill this area, which it did, it came a bit lower, and my stop is at 149. So it's not the lows of the day, it's the breakout candle on the one hour chart. So we'll see what happens. It should at least give it two days, at least, with a first target of 247, about. Then we have SFWL, which is more of a, this one was tough because I let it slide last week. Now I'm in profits, but I think I'm gonna take some profits in the morning and then raise my stop loss to the actual level, which I should. But it's based on this big picture here on the daily chart. It just broke out of this, you know, area. First time we had the daily close uh, above above this area, or I should actually say this area here. First time we closed over, and then it wouldn't really, you know, come back. It just went dead sideways, but creating sort of higher lows. And then I bought it in here with proper size, but then I added here somewhere with too much size. So I'm I'm oversized, but right now I'm in profits, so I should sell some at the market open and then raise my stop loss to what would be the, uh, the breakout day, which is this day right here above this little flag. It looks more clear on the four hour, I think. Yeah, this little area right here, above this. <clears throat> so, first of all, I want to add my hard stop under here, after I've taken profits. And then I want to raise the stop loss on the 4-hour, the 10-4-hour uh, 10, the 10 four hour close. <laughs> oh well, see you next week. I'm just talking. <clears throat> I'm just talking. Ciao.